Hello, 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 hello. My people, my people, my people. My name is Marie Nguato Akayando. If it's your first time coming to my channel, do not forget to hit the subscription button. And if you like what you're seeing, my beautiful kids, and my content, do not forget to hit the like and the like uh, the like button and uh, I was um that lady that um no one want to be seen with I think that's a tender age because no young man want to be seen with in the daytime they want to hide behind in the night time um I was the one that um even when I start dating I said that in my early 20s in the university in um sorry if I'm digressing. You know I'm a storyteller. The first guy I dated, he you know as a young guy, so I never blamed him. I always tell him that um you're a young guy. Um, I was very mature. My dad, my late father will always call me to my mommy because of my maturity. I was young, I was like 12. My mind was like somebody who was um 50. In my 20s, my mind was like 19. So you see me, people of my age group then will not even want to be my friend because they always tell me you behave like a grand you talk like a grandmother, you have too much. Um you are not my mother, the papa, all those type of things. Then I realized that that was wisdom. I didn't know what wisdom was. But with age, I know it was wisdom. So I always tell him that um I understand he's a young guy. And I understand, um, you know, then I didn't have a relationship with God. I understand that um, he's ashamed of his friends. So I fear ne, he will like, when we go out like in a social gathering, we have to go out of our city that we're living in. Then when we see them, then when we are coming back, he will tell me, you'll be going in front, I'll be coming behind. I don't want people to see us together. You know that um, the pain of that was difficult to erase. I felt that pain. I felt that negation for too long, for a long time. My heart, sometimes I would sit and cry. Yes, I was that lady now, be going in front, let me be coming behind. I don't want people to see us together. He comes to my house then in the night time. He don't want me to come and visit him in the house. So I was that Linda. Um, all his friends knew about it. Until someone even meet me and be telling me. And then one other guy wants to talk to me, be telling me that I don't want you. I'm not ashamed of you, but I want to show you to the whole world. So um not that i was not pretty i was very pretty not that i was not smart i was very smart but because i had a disability i became an outcast that's what i used to know that I was an anchor which made me to work so hard for sure which made me want to become a better person which made me um i'm happy i did what i did i got two nephews and i put my time so I always see that I don't, I never had a teenager age, but my childhood was very pleasurable. As a teenager, I like jumped from a child to a young adult because I took my time and I helped my little nephew to grow up them, and which was a, it, it was nice for me to do it than to be roaming around looking for one man to the other, and spend time with myself, develop myself, which is what is I'm seeing the benefit of what I did now. At an at a later age, and all that self confidence I built, but I wish I knew the um, I wish I knew God in a deeper way, like now, to spend more time with God. But I I didn't have a relationship the way I have now with God. We were going to church on Sunday. You're free today, the boy. People, the boys were free to drink alcohol. You have one boyfriend. It's not a sin to my community. <laughs> Ah, God have mercy. So I want to um 
for everything that happened i thank god because um it happened for a reason and i was that one that um even when i went to visit my godfather when when he was with, he was with people he would be ashamed for them to see me it's just my godfather that he's talking to me so he will neglect me because of my disability many people were shying away from me i have a name a cousin we're in the university together when i'm working with him my cousin blood first cousin he will when we meet his friends he will like pretend he will just tell them one time and say my eyes uh, say um solo solo for example this is my cousin no this is my cousin you know why he's doing like that he's afraid that the thing i'm his girlfriend how can they see him walking with a girl like me how can a lady like me be his girlfriend zip in here just smart yo but i wasn't angry surprisingly i'm not i was not angry with those people I just saying if only they know that life is a mystery if only they know what god have ahead of me and of them if only they can rewind life and come back 10 years later and see how god is going to surprise them uh i was that one that um as i said that no one again wanted to be associated with me also my roommate that i used to live with she had a boyfriend which had an ex-boyfriend he she came home and she introduced like this is my ex-boyfriend he called the boy's name and we just sat and talked the next day we're going to i was going home i was from home because you have to stop at the junction to go into the university i was living to we take a taxi once in a while i'll just try to walk to do exercise so i was walking home i met this guy with his group of friends for some reason as god was i saw somebody hiding in the midst of people yeah. i said but what is it he's hiding in the midst of people ha huh? i want to turn was the ex-boyfriend of my roommate i look at him he's telling his friend he's hiding he's hiding that he don't want them he don't want me to see him why for nothing you no know, because they are going to say that how can he know somebody like me so when i went home i told my roommate so when i met him the other time i was with my roommate on the road walking when he greeted me i refused to greet him he said what's the matter my roommate said because you you're right hiding away from him and he felt so bad and he came and was begging me that please forgive me forgive me and that situation also i did not blame he's a young man he wants to be belonging he don't want them to see him walking with the people as they call it because one time i entered the taxi and i was going inside the university campus where we live we live around the inside the university campus my hostess was there so you have to like tell the security to open you the gate so it was late in the night so the security man is trying to i get the taxi the driver was a taxi man was trying to tell the people to open the gate and he told them that uh, there's a cripple here there's a cripple here. <laughs> i know he was describing me as a cripple but the pain i felt then was unexplainable and then he like felt pity for me the eyes he was just looking at me the one time i entered the taxi and the the taxi the driver told me hey ah he was laughing he said young girl young girl beautiful girl beautiful girl i was just looking at him he said ah, you fine you fine person and i was always doing my hair i was taking care of myself he told me that i've seen you you are taking care of yourself you always do nice nice time and another thing is that uh, I want to marry to you. Why? You know why I want to marry to you? Because you're going to give me intelligent children who are going to the university. Look, are you going to school? I I don't want all these other girls who are not serious with life. You see, you know, I just have pity. You know, there's nobody else for you. Just have pity. No, have pity. I'm a, say, you have to be happy that I have pity for you. Driver is telling you, the university student, that I have to have pity to marry me. I mean, 
because I'm in the same room. And I look, you see, you're not saying anything. I just laugh. All was full. Tears rushing down my face. Tears. I said, God, when I went back, I said, what did I do? What, who did I offend? In a world when I didn't, I met myself like that. It's not that I caused this upon myself. What is wrong with me, Father? But I, I will still pull up myself and I went ahead. I did not allow anything to pull me down. I still pulling. In a society, I was that one that um everybody like when when I was in university, my mom told me that he made him um one of my godfather again. He told the man that um let me not specify. He told like he told the man also surprised about me in the university. So he told somebody is that my daughter was in the university. He would say, Your daughter? Maybe your daughter? Yeah. What happened? How manage? Did he pass? So he can read book and pa people mistake that because I have a physical disability, my brain also is sick. That is a lie. Physically disabled, that's what they said. Mentally, I'm all right. I am not crazy. So do not look somebody who is physically disabled, think that they are mentally challenged. Not only in Africa, even in this country, my experience as a disabled, because I'm physically challenged. I'm not physically, I'm physically challenged, just not me that I'm mentally challenged. I'm very smart. I'm a young lady with a, a mind of my own. I have a lot of talent. I've written a lot of books. I can. There are many things. Educational wise, I'm very smart. There are things I do that people with their two legged bands, as they call it, with their two legs. My sister called it legged bands. With their legs that they can walk and run and take it like a Mercedes. But yet, nothing. So you cannot, because I'm physically challenged, my life, you know, it cannot go to an end. So I'm that one that um, I'm to be left behind. I'm to be felt pity for. I didn't want anyone to have pity for me because I'm a disabled. I'm that one that um, even when we go somewhere, like my late brother always said, um, if he goes somewhere, he wants people to notice him. He's going to take me to work alone. <laughs> that was just a clown. That was just, just um. That was a fun time, which it was not only a fun time, but it implies that wherever I go to, people quickly recognize me because of my condition, which made me different. I was that one that when I was passing somewhere, like my brother always hold me, my late brother. You would think he was my boo husband. If he didn't know us, he would like carry me on his back, like hold me like that up. Those things. He was told by many people, how come he could got married to somebody with a disability like that? And he would just laugh and tell them that that's the best thing that ever happened to him. To some people that he didn't even want to clean, you just look at him and smile. That they didn't know what he was saying. So I was that one that um when I went to one um city called Bamenda, my nephew and I were walking. This is a true life story. The whole city in that particular it was a small area. All of them came out. Children, this how they were looking at me. But I asked my cousin that what is wrong with them? My cousin said, Let them know mine. They have never seen a beautiful lady like me. So I was telling my cousin that is it because of my disability? All those people are just looking at that. According to me, these are village people. Let me not mind them. It's just because of my they have they have never seen somebody who is beautiful the way I am. I know he just said that just to console me and he smile and move on. You know, I was that one that um when I go enter somewhere, anybody will leave their eyes. Some people leave their eyes with sorrow. Some people leave their eyes with I don't know. Say what? Even her also. Even her too. So, um, being a disabled, um, 
has made me strong, has made me a better person, has made me um not having um grudges to people, has made me that no matter what people do, I still forgive them. You hardly see me carry on, break down in my life and me. You have a disabled person with a disability. Treat them better. You don't know if that person will be the one that will survive your family. If you have a sister, a loved one, a husband, a brother, they too need love. Show them some love. Stop despising them. Stop looking at them different. Stop um not giving them opportunity because of their disability. Just let them be themselves. Just let them show their own talent. Just let them have the mind of their own. And let them be happy also. In this country, they... I am proud. I'm from Africa. I have my identity, which is my accent. When I speak, everybody stood up and said, Wow, your accent is pretty. Why will I come and talk like you people? Like the Americans. So when I talk, how we they know I'm different? And how we they know, ah, where are you from? Which country are you from? How we I advertise myself as an African? So the only, I always say that I want to speak better. Because I know I'm a, I'm a public speaker from a little age. I know I'll become a public speaker. So I always pray that I want my, I want to speak so well, clear, simple, for anybody to understand me. I don't want to change my accent. And I'm very happy with my accent. Let me just be clear. But when I speak, you must know I'm different. Where I'm coming from. So I have an opportunity to tell you I'm from Africa. To tell you where I'm from. To try to advertise. To know where Africa is also. It's a beautiful place. And they always ask me, are you going back? I say, yes, I'm going back. Yes. So, I thank God for everything. I want to thank everyone who watched this video today. You can pass the message out there. It's not like uh, you can. People have issues also. Even in marriages, people face different situations. So I just want to encourage everyone. You have a problem. You have an issue in your life among your children. Do not give up. My mom never gave up on me. So I am where I am because my mother stood by me the bible even says that if a child goes wrong the mother is to be blamed if it is go good the father will win the children so mothers hold on to your kid no matter how they are god can still make it win it has been your girl marie thank you so much for watching